One of the most exciting things about traveling is having the opportunity to experience new and different cultures. However, there is a lot that comes along with that that you should be prepared for sometimes just so you're not caught off guard by some things that might seem completely normal in another country that are not normal in the country that you come from. And maybe I don't want to use the word normal. Let's say customary. So what we're going to talk about today is the do's and don'ts of going to Turkey. And it's going to be all about just some cultural nuances in Turkey that you might not know exist that you should be prepared for when you go to Turkey. So if you are interested in that information, keep watching. My name is Laila and thank you for tuning into my channel. I am a solo female black full-time traveler and remote worker. And I am here to help you get more comfortable with traveling the world solo and curating the life of your dreams abroad. And today we're going to talk about some customs in Turkey that are do's and don'ts that you want to be aware of when you go there. So the first one I want to highlight is be sure to check the Muslim holiday calendar and specifically which ones are observed in Turkey. And also you might want to check what other national holidays are observed in Turkey. And this is important. It's not going to be something that necessarily diminishes your experience while you're in the country. However, some of these holidays like Ramadan or Bayram could have an impact such as the hours of operations of places could be different. Um, the days that something is open, a museum or something might change. Or it could be something like if you're going to a part of the country where people tend to go on holiday during these times, it could be significantly more expensive or things just might not be available. So this is a big thing that you'll want to be aware of. So do check the Muslim holiday calendar that is observed in Turkey. The second one I want to point out is learn some Turkish words. So this is kind of something that should be obvious, but this is something I meet a lot of travelers along my journey who it's one thing if you're just going somewhere for a, a few days, right? Like you might not have time to really learn the whole language and it might be more effort than it's worth when you're traveling somewhere for just a few days. However, for me personally, my thing is at minimum, you should learn how to say hello, good morning, thank you, and maybe just any other words that are going to help you navigate the places that you know you're going to go a lot. Restaurants, um, tours, uh, if you're going to be looking for the bathroom, you know, just simple stuff like this. So let's go through a few just to give you like a heads up. So hello in Turkey in Turkish. So first of all, they speak Turkish in Turkey. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think they speak Arab, but they speak Turkish in Turkey. Um, so hello is merhaba. Uh, thank you is teşekkür ederim. Uh, good morning is günaydın. But if you even want to take those things a step further and like really have the locals like light up, when you go in places, you will hear hosh yaldiniz, hosh yaldiniz, everywhere you go, restaurants, stores, museums, coming into somebody's house, you will hear hosh yaldiniz. And that means welcome. So your response back should be hosh bulduk. Um, and I forget exactly what it means. I think hosh bulduk means like, I, I am glad to be welcomed or something like that. If you're Turkish and watching this or you know Turkish, um, Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But basically, this is what you say back. Um, and then, you know, things like when you're leaving a place, you know, say, uh, um, or you say, uh, just learn these little phrases because I didn't really start learning these things until I was about two months into being in Turkey. And when I started taking Turkish lessons, shout out to my uh, tutor. I love her. Um, but... I could just tell a difference in the way that people would light up as soon as they realize that I knew to say Hosh Bulduk. Like something as simple as that can totally change the type of experience that you have in a country. So definitely learn some Turkish words and the greetings. Um, join the, so the third one I wanna highlight is 
join the Facebook groups for Turkey. Do join the Facebook groups for Turkey. This is important because, well, the Facebook groups are just a wealth of knowledge. And at this point, I pretty much am only on Facebook for my travel groups. Like it's 99% of what I use Facebook for. So I know a lot of you don't like Facebook. You don't do socials, blah, 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 blah. But, and I get that, I really do. But you are missing out on a wealth of information. Uh, I, don't, I don't know of any other place that you can get the type of information, real time, boots on the ground, like you can get on Facebook. Um, and I will put the link to my favorite Turkey Facebook groups. Um, but basically, not only are they going to, is it going to give you a sense of what community is like there in the expat groups, maybe not so much community, but um, it's going to give you access to people who can give you real time information, information that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. You can do all the research that you want. Let's just say on something like uh, where's the best restaurants to go right? And you could look up this information. However, we just came through a pandemic, right? Well, we're still in a pandemic technically, right? But so how do you know if that restaurant is still open? Maybe their hours have changed. Maybe there's COVID regulations in the country that have now shut, you know, changed what can be open and capacity. So groups like Facebook will be able to tell you what's going on right now. Also, it's a good resource for finding out what events are taking place that might not be events that take place all the time. If there's a special celebration, if there's some type of parade, if there's a concert or a show, um, Facebook groups will be able to give you insight into all that, but also give you real time information on what regulations are changing in the country, what's the climate of things right now. Obviously, um, I'm not sure when you're going to be watching this video, but at the time of my recording, the Ukraine and Russia are at war. That doesn't necessarily involve Turkey, but the Turkish groups will be able to tell you what you might want to be mindful of if there is an impact on Turkey for that. So number three, join the Turkey Facebook groups. All right, so number four, and this is going to be really important, especially for my ladies who are all about their skincare regimen, okay? And if you're coming long-term to Turkey specifically, bring your favorite skincare, makeup, and hair care products, okay? Yes, there are products available in Turkey, but it's very inconsistent about what's available where. And Turkey is not one of these countries that has big box stores like Walmart. Like I'm in Mexico right now, so... I can pretty much find anything I need because they have a lot of the same stores that we have in the States. But um, skincare is something that they have available in Turkey. But if you're looking for a specific brands that you're used to using, particularly coming from the United States, they are very, very expensive. And in some instances, you can't find what you need. So I love products by The Ordinary and Kiehl's. Um, Kiehl's is in Turkey. It's more expensive than it is in the United States. Um, but The Ordinary, you can order products off of a site called Trendial. You can order The Ordinary. However, there's much debate around whether it's actually the authentic products from The Ordinary. And they're literally like six times the price as what they cost in the States. And Trendial's delivery is... I'll talk about that in another video. But... Do bring your skincare, hair care. And if you're a black girl, y'all know, y'all already know, it's hard enough for us to find products in certain places in the States. And also our hair is so individualized that, you know, we go through 12 different products in our home country just to find the one that works for us. And once you find the one that works for you, you do not want to have to deviate from that and be using a bunch of strange stuff. So if you know, especially if you're natural, right? If you're natural and you wear your hair out and it takes a certain set of products to make sure that your hair and your curls is popping, bring your stuff with you. And then makeup, obviously, you know, we all have different undertones in our skin. I'm obviously a chocolate sister, very melanated. I don't find colors that go well with my skin in the States. So, you know, if you're in a predominantly fair skinned homogenous country, 
that it's not likely that you're gonna find a wide variety of makeup colors that are gonna match your skin tone, your undertones, and blah, blah, blah. So, bring your stuff. Uh, especially if, like I said, especially if you're planning to stay for a little while. All right, what number am I on? What number am I on? Oh, number five, embrace the culture. Again, this is kind of similar to what I was saying about learning some Turkish words. These things should go without saying, but greet people. Like, greetings are a big thing in Turkey. Like, greetings and even when you're leaving places, you will hear people say, you will exchange greetings when you're leaving like six times. But embrace that. Drink a thousand glasses of tea because you are going to be offered tea everywhere you go drink the tea i love the tea i'm in mexico now and nobody has offered me tea anywhere don't nobody offer me nothing here in mexico actually but i'm not gonna harp on mexico <laughs> i'm sorry I, I get sidetracked what else do i want to say oh things like they go to dinner very late okay like i'm a person who i am usually in bed by like 10 o'clock no dinner is starting at like 9 9 30 okay and y'all gonna be out until 1 a.m. and then they're probably going to want to go somewhere else. But just live in that moment, right? It's different. It's something different. Experience it. See what it's like. Maybe not do it every day because I know eating that late all the time is not necessarily good for the waistline. But embrace it. Embrace the three-hour lunch, okay? Be prepared for this. Like, if someone who is Turkish or lives in Turkey invites you to lunch, just clear your afternoon schedule okay like it's gonna be a while embrace the extra time with family and friends like they really prioritize spending time with the people that they love and care about this was something that was very nice for me to embrace especially coming from a country where you know i have to schedule brunch with my friends like three or four weeks out because various things you know Whereas I felt like in Turkey, people were just like, hey, I'm having, I'm cooking lamb chops tonight. Come on over. And it would be all night. We'd sit on the rooftop and have drinks and eat and, you know, have three courses. And I mean, I know this is not everybody's Turkey experience, but listen, I can't help it if the favor of the Lord is on my life. All right. What else? Oh, and the kissing for greetings. So if I, most people are familiar with in France, they do les trabis, which is... In Turkey, they do two kisses. So don't be caught off guard if when you are meeting up with someone who has either been living in Turkey or is Turkish, if they do the, if they kind of grab you and do the on either side of your cheeks. They're not getting fresh with you. They're not being flirt. Well, some of, some of the time they're being flirty, but this is just cultural, right? Something else nice to embrace. Number six visit eastern turkey do visit eastern turkey i know that a lot of people who are just going on a trip and maybe only have seven to ten days to be in turkey they're gonna and it's their first time you're gonna go to istanbul you're gonna spend your whole time in istanbul i will be doing another video on my suggestion for a three-day istanbul itinerary because as much as I love Istanbul, I do not believe you need to spend more than three days there if you're on a short trip, okay? If you're living in Turkey, spend as much time in Istanbul as you want and go go somewhere else whenever you have the opportunity. But if you're traveling, especially from the States, right? If you're traveling all the way to Turkey and you only have 10 days or seven days, like you, you should try to go more than one place. You you will not be missing anything in your seven to day, 10 day trip if you only do three days in Istanbul. So if you are interested in seeing the video on my suggested three day itinerary in Istanbul, definitely like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss that. But back to visiting Eastern Turkey. There is a lot of hullabaloo about visiting Eastern Turkey. Oh, it's dangerous. Oh, you shouldn't go. Oh, Syria. Oh, refugees. Oh, terrorism. Listen, 
I'm not gonna say just pick up and go, okay? But organize yourself, right? With whatever the appropriate resources are to go to Eastern Turkey. I have been to Gaziantep, Antakya, Adana, Mardin, I, Iskenderun, I loved all of them. And I wish I had spent more time there. I wish that it wasn't towards the end. Actually, no, I don't wanna say I, don't, I wish that it wasn't towards the end of my trip, but I, I definitely wish I had prioritized spending more time there. And there's so many other wonderful places to go in Eastern Turkey. Um, maybe you will need a guide, but I know a sister, a solo traveler who literally rented a van and traveled from Southern Turkey all the way up to Black Sea region through Eastern Turkey without a guide for most of the time and she was fine. So do plan to visit Eastern Turkey. You are going, if you are a history buff, if you love history, if you love, uh, if you are any kind of um, spiritual scholar, Bible scholar, if you are just a person who loves art and culture and beauty, Eastern Turkey is not to be missed. All right, number seven, be prepared to squat and pee and keep some toilet tissue in your purse, your pocket, your backpack. So I don't know if you've ever seen, I'll try to um, put a picture. If I can find a picture of one, I will put it in this video. But there are these in-ground um, toilets in some places. So you will have to spread your legs drop it low, <laughs> drop down and get your eagle on <laughs> to use the bathroom, okay? Um, and you just should be prepared for this. The first time I saw one, I was very caught off guard. Um, I did not encounter many of them in Istanbul, but I definitely <laughs> ran into this over and over again um, at some of the smaller airports in Turkey and definitely like in Eastern Turkey, if you're in small villages, uh, just be prepared for that. And it's not a big deal, right? But just something you should, if you have bad knees, I don't know how it's gonna work out for you, but, and they don't always have toilet paper. And on the same note about the bathrooms, um, carry a little loose change with you because in some places it is one Turkish lira to use the bathroom. Um, and not like someone standing there and can give you grace and let you in. Like there's a turnstile that will not open and let you in until you pay. So if you don't have change on you, you will be, and it's also most of Turkey that I went to is not the type of place where you can just find a bush and use the bathroom in the bushes. So this is my tips on using the bathroom in Turkey. It's really important. Okay. Uh, number eight, take some dietary supplements with you, especially if you're not going to be cooking your own food regularly while you're there. I was there for 10 months. Um, at a certain point I was kind of, well, the first four months that I was in Turkey, uh, we were on lockdown. The restaurants weren't even open. So I did a lot of cooking, but I also did a lot of ordering in. And I wanted to try the local foods. Like obviously I'm a food blogger, I'm a huge foodie. So I wanted to try the local foods. But what comes along with that? If you've ever traveled to other countries, you're probably familiar with this. Different cuisines are using different spices, different herbs, different seasonings. The meat curing process could be different what they're allowed to put and not allowed to put in their meat might be different. Um, sauces, creams, just there could, there's any number of reasons. I don't think parasites are really a thing in Turkey, at least I didn't experience anything with that, but you'll want to bring your dietary supplements just in case. Um, the other part of that is um, if you're eating out a lot, there's not a lot of vegetables that get served with Turkish cuisine. Um, it's a very carb and meat heavy diet. If you're eating in someone's home, like when I when I was invited to people's homes, I was served a lot of vegetables um, and actually a lot of really amazing vegetarian dishes. But in restaurants, like the closest thing to vegetables that I was served in most restaurants was a shepherd salad. <laughs> and it's basically chopped up cucumbers, onions, and tomatoes with some lemon juice it's bomb but like 
For those of us who like a diet that's rich in green leafy vegetables and foliage, like asparagus, kale, Swiss chard, spinach, broccoli, like once you remove those from your diet because they're not being served to you regularly, different things can start happening with your body. Um, and again, I'm a person who's big on my skin. Like when I am not ingesting the proper nutrients, like I just don't have this wonderful glow. And, and also you can get backed up, right? Like you're just not gonna be. So when I say your dietary supplements, I mean like your vitamin A, D, E, C, B, probiotics, prebiotics, and maybe even a laxative, right? This is important, right? Because I think a lot of travelers, especially people who are like digital nomads and stuff, like the health aspects that we have to be mindful of, like this is something I really wanna talk about in another video too, because it's really difficult to, it's a lot more, it's not super difficult, it's more difficult to lead a healthy, balanced, nutritious lifestyle when you are traveling on the go like this all the time and you don't have a home base, right? Um, and you have to really make a conscious effort to prioritize this. Uh, so I just say that, bring your vitamins. Okay, number nine, if you are an avid wine drinker, if you, particularly if red wine is your favorite, Ma'am, sir, bring your own wine. I don't know how you're gonna have to smuggle it in, but Turkish wine is just not it. Unless you like rosé, okay? I love Cabernet Sauvignon. I did not like a single Cabernet Sauvignon that I tried while I was in Turkey. There is um, a girl who specializes in kind of talking about all the wines in Turkey. I will plug her Instagram down below. I never got a chance to attend one of her tastings, um, but she's in Istanbul and she's a good resource for pointing you in the direction of decent Turkish wines. Uh, but for me personally, they do excellent rosé really really good rosé and I really started drinking rosé exclusively when I was in Turkey because all the other wine was pretty bad and the ones that you will find that are good are quite expensive for a bottle of wine so if you are like I gotta have my red wine I gotta have my favorite really great wine at the end of the night or with dinner you should bring you a few bottles and every time you go home and come back you should bring some with you pro tip all right what do we uh number 10 i have a lot of these huh <laughs> 10 do try all the cheeses okay turkey has some amazing cheese i know that france uh kind of wins the award out here for having great cheese but I have never seen a selection of cheese like I have seen in Turkey outside of France. Um, and they're all pretty, really good. Now there is one cheese that gets served with Cavalti that just kind of tastes like plastic. It doesn't really have any kind of taste. It looks like string cheese, but it's not really string cheese. But some people love it. So try all the Turkish cheeses because they're bomb. And if you're going to different regions, try, ask about whatever cheese is native to that region and try it there. Um, there are places, ooh, when I was in Cappadocia and Gorame specifically, they have like this aged cheese that they put in jars and they like store under the house and age it. This cheese, I don't even know what it's called and it sucks that I really can't even go in anywhere and ask for it, but I will go back to Cappadocia to the place where I had it and I will ask them, can you bring me out the homemade aged cheese because it's bomb. All right, this one is kind of, um, this is actually probably a big one for a lot of you. And it's definitely something that you want to be prepared for. So number 11, be prepared for the cigarette smoke. Unfortunately, uh, smoking in most European countries is like a national pastime. I mean, chain smoking is like, it's just, it just is what it is. And I'm not a person who is completely bothered by cigarette smoke. Um, 
I, I actually got really used to it. I even found myself picking up a cigarette here and there. Um, not, not proud of that, but like the same. But if you are somebody who is like, uh, 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 just know, like Turkey might not be the place for you. You are going to be very uncomfortable. They smoke everywhere. Smoking is customary in restaurants. I mean, there's very few places that I went that people weren't smoking, okay? Um, so if this is like a deal breaker for you, I know people who have come to Turkey and complained about it the entire time to the extent that it sounded like it kind of ruined their trip. They smoke, okay? They gonna smoke. They gonna smoke. So just be prepared. And I mean, this is, like I said, this is pretty much throughout Europe. If you go in, they gonna smoke, honey. They smoking, okay? Um, all right. <laughs> 12. Do shop for designer goods. Listen, if you know me for real, you know I'm a Louis girl. I love my Louis Vuitton. It's pretty much the only designer that I'm super duper into um, because I'm not on like an Hermes or Chanel level yet. But sis loves her some Louis Vuitton and they have good Louis Vuitton in Istanbul. They have maybe three different Louis Vuitton stores in Istanbul. And I have a favorite, it's in Nishantashi. And um, you should definitely go there. I did find that the prices were a bit cheaper than the United States. And um, if you are staying in Turkey for less than 90 days, you will get your taxes back that you pay on your designer goods at the airport or in some other places that you will see around Turkey. So. If you are into designer goods, and if you're in Istanbul in particular, there is Prada, there is Gucci, there is Chanel, there is Louis Vuitton, there is whoever you want, really. Like, they got it, okay? Um, I don't know that I necessarily saw anything that was exclusive to Turkey in terms of, like, I didn't see any Louis Vuitton that was like, oh, you're only going to find this here in Turkey. But I guess sis got some things. Some things, some things that I really love too. Like I'm in Mexico right now, so I didn't travel with my Louis Vuitton. <laughs> I'm not saying people, but it's just different culture. Mexico is not the place for bouncing around with all your, you know, like, you know. So I miss my things though. I miss my things. Okay. Mm, we're coming to the end of the list. We're rounding it out. And then I'm going to talk about some things to not do. Okay. This one might be a little controversial. But I'm going to say it anyway. Do find a Turkish male friend. Okay. I don't know a politically correct way to say this. But I'll say it like this. Turkey is one of those countries that if you are a woman and you get yourself into a bind or you're doing some type of business and you're not super familiar with the culture and you don't know the language. I don't want to I don't want to make this sound like women are not empowered in Turkey because I know a lot of badass women in Turkey that are doing the damn thing, okay? So I don't want to put that out there like that. But if you are a foreigner and you are unfamiliar with the culture and you don't speak the language and you need to navigate official business or you might find yourself in some type of Okay, I'll give you an example. I lost my cell phone. I left my cell phone in a taxi in Turkey. And sorry, sorry phone call. <laughs> um, I left my cell phone in a taxi in Turkey. And but for me having a Turkish male friend, my phone would be gone to this day. Okay. Um, and I have several other instances of my time in Turkey where it was just very helpful to have a Turkish male friend to help you navigate certain situations. So I don't know how to tell you to find him. I'm not saying find you a Turkish husband. I'm not saying you got to be sleeping with him, but I'm just saying find you. You know what was the best resource for me? The women that I met in Turkey who were married to Turkish men. I just adopted their husbands and it proved to be very invaluable for me, right? They're just going to be able, it's a country where men like dealing with men, okay? And 
you can hate that. But while you're hating that, you if you're planning to be there in the country, you still need to know how to navigate that. So my recommendation, find a Turkish male to befriend. Just genuinely, not to use, but just like, hey, you seem cool. Let's be cool. And then if you need something like, hey, I need some help with this. Can you help the sister out? And they will, gladly. Okay, so now that we've talked about the things that you should do when you're traveling to Turkey, let's talk a little bit about the things that you should not do. All right, obviously, don't miss out on the local foods. I know some of you are not adventurous, so I'm not saying you have to be like me and try sheep's bladder and intestines, okay? Which, by the way, I would not necessarily recommend unless, unless you're just really adventurous with your food, then absolutely. But try the local foods. Most of them are really good. Turkish cuisine is phenomenal. It's very well seasoned. Everything, mm, just especially if you are a meat eater, um, tantuni, pide, um, manta, um, shit all of the all of the any kind of kebab <laughs> um but a lot of dishes i will have a whole blog post um on my food experiences in turkey because obviously i'm a food blogger well maybe not obvious that might not be obvious to some of you i'm a food blogger that's actually how i wound up going to turkey but again a video for another time however um the link to my blog will be below and most of my food travels will uh, food blogs food writing will be on the blog as opposed to on youtube and i'll talk about all of my favorite turkish foods but if you would like for me to do a video on my favorite turkish foods uh leave me a comment below and uh i will gladly do that because i love food i love talking about food i love turkish food um but try the local foods i don't think you will be i don't know anybody who has gone to turkey well, there was this one guy in a thread on a Facebook post that I saw and I was just like, but then I was like, you know what? People love Mexican food and I don't really like Mexican cuisine that much. Um, I tend to only like like gourmet high end Mexican food here in Mexico. But so different strokes for different folks, right? But 99.99999% of the people I know who have been to Turkey love Turkish food. So don't miss out. On the local foods next thing don't get annoyed by the call to prayer and i think i kind of talked about this earlier when i was talking about the dues but the call to prayer goes out five times a day there is nowhere sorry i got my batteries running low on my phone <laughs> my bad um the only place that i visited in turkey that i did not consistently hear the call to prayer was izmir um, so if the call to prayer is something that's really going to annoy you, maybe Izmir is a place you would enjoy visiting, um, because I did not really hear the call to prayer there and they kind of pride themselves on like not being all into the Muslim thing. I get, I guess, allegedly. Okay. I'm just telling y'all my experience. I don't want nobody who is in Izmir to be in my comments like, y'all know what you're talking about about Izmir, but the call to prayer is going to go out. I found it to be quite soothing, honestly. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciated the reminder to take a sacred pause, right? I'm obviously Christian. I'm not Muslim, but I am definitely a praying woman. And if you have any type of spirituality, like anything that's reminding you to take a sacred pause is something you kind of embrace. Next one. Don't be offended if you are asked to remove your shoes. As a part of Muslim culture, taking your shoes off before you enter into a mosque or before you enter into people's homes is customary. Um, not every, every mosque you go into, you will be asked to remove your shoes. At least every mosque that I went to, you will ask to be removed. You will be asked to remove your shoes. And if you are a woman, cover your head. Y'all, again... You can debate all day long about why it's wrong, blah, 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 I don't like it, da, 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 it's patriarchy. Listen, it's the culture. If you don't like it, don't go there, okay? Don't go in a mosque. If you're trying to go in a mosque, they're going to tell you to cover your head and take your shoes off and just be ready to comply or don't go. And <laughs> not 
everyone will ask you to take your shoes off, but there were even some Airbnbs where I stayed um, that were all my own, where the host just asked me like, please don't wear your shoes in the house. It's not a big deal. Was it kind of like in the winter time when I was like wearing boots and having to come in and da -da -da, carrying stuff, but it's a, you're gonna be, I'm, you gotta be respectful, okay? You're in another country, you're not in your house. So be respectful of the culture, don't be offended. Three, don't believe the negative hype, right? I can't remember when I first said I was going to Turkey. Like, people were like, oh, you're going to Turkey as a woman, alone, you black, you American, you gonna die. Like, I'm not saying there isn't problems in Turkey. I'm not saying terrorism doesn't exist. I'm not saying that femicide is not a thing. I'm not saying that there are not legitimate stories of things happening to people in Turkey. However, I was there for 10 months. I met people who have lived in Turkey for years and years and years, decades in some instances, and this is just not their story, okay? So, and this is with any country, okay? Like, Mexico really taught me this, and I know this isn't a, vis a, vi a video on Mexico, but I'm in Mexico right now, and it's fresh. And so, Mexico being the second country that I have lived in that kind of had a lot of negative hype around it in terms of how you could be treated, all I can tell you is, guys, you have to go to countries for yourself, okay, and see, because... A lot of people will go somewhere and think they were treated some way because they're a woman or because they're black or because they're American or because they're foreign. And then you'll find someone else who is black, a woman, American, foreign, that will go to these places and have a completely different experience. Guys, like black people are not a monolith. Americans are not a monolith. Women are not a monolith. People are not a monolith and neither are our experiences, okay? So you gotta get out of this mindset of believing everything you hear about a country. Now, if there's someone who you really trust and know exactly where they're coming from and they're telling you that, yo, this is not a place to go, then okay. But if there's a place you're really feeling a strong pull to and you've always wanted to go, do not let negative hype around the place deter you from going. Turkey is a lovely place. Eastern Turkey is a lovely place. I, you know, people talk about all oh, the men in Turkey, they're so aggressive. You, you can't even walk down the street. I didn't have those problems. And it's not because I'm not an attractive woman because I am, y'all see me, okay? <laughs> right, I didn't have those problems, I just didn't. Or I'm also a person who, I don't magnify that type of stuff in my mind, right? So that's kind of another thing I should say. This is not specific to Turkey, really, but don't travel out of the country with all your personal hangups, okay? Like, the opportunity to travel abroad and experience other cultures is supposed to be something that expands you and grows you and develops you and matures you, okay? So go with the mind frame of, I'm going to be, I'm going to be enriched. Don't go there with all your baggage and hangups that you have from whatever country you're coming from or whatever you heard, okay? I'm so sick of people being like, oh, I heard women was treated bad. And Listen, I, as a woman, as a black woman, I was treated the best I have ever been treated in my life while I was in Turkey, okay? So, and I'm not special. Okay, I'm not special. I, it's not because I was just, I showed up and I was so wonderful and great. It was just how it was. All right. Next thing, don't look for any big box stores, okay? Um, and what I mean is there's no Costco, Sam's Club, Walmart, Target. Don't look for any, There, there's not a lot. In some places, when I was in Antalya, they had like a big store called Metro, um, and then you will find, um, some Migros, like huge ones that are selling a lot of stuff. But in most places that I was in, in Turkey, it is not customary to find one-stop shopping type stores. Okay. So just be prepared that if you need light bulbs and doorknobs and fruit and cereal and underwear, 
you're not gonna be able to just go to one store <laughs> and find all of it, okay? And I, I, I actually, that was something I ended up embracing. I actually loved running around to 80 different stores to get like five things. It became fun. Um, <laughs> don't expect for package delivery to work like it works. If, particularly if you are from the United States, okay? I know we've been spoiled in the United States by Amazon Prime, where if we order something at 8 o'clock in the morning, it's on our doorstep at 2 p.m. This is just not a thing in Turkey, okay? Like, you can order stuff. They have apps where you can order stuff. Now, food, groceries, you can order, and they're going to be there in, like, 10 minutes. Um, but, like, their version of, like, Amazon-type ordering, listen, cargo, packages, I wouldn't have anybody ship me anything there if I were you. I wouldn't order anything from outside of the country if I were you. Um, and I, I, and just know if you order something on like Trendyol or one of these apps sites that they have in Turkey for ordering things, you're not going to know when it's going to come. Okay. Like literally it's the type of thing where like, you just have to stay at home until it gets there because you don't have a mailbox. <laughs> I don't know what other folks have, but everywhere I lived in Turkey, I didn't have no mailbox, okay? Um, there are some buildings that do have like, you know, where you stick the mail in the thing or whatever, but y'all, they're nine times out of 10 gonna leave it at your door or in the door slot or whatever. And if you're not there, they're probably not gonna leave your, like I had instances where someone, someone sent me something, a really nice gentleman sent me some gifts. It was nice. Um, but I was, I missed the delivery. They literally left the package like three doors down with the guy who owned the shop three doors down from where I was living, which thank God people are honest, but just no, don't expect delivery to work <laughs> like it works. It's not, you're not going to get Amazon prime same day, one day, like you're going to order something and you're just going to have to like hail Mary. Okay. It's going to come, but just don't know. <laughs> do not hold up the line at the grocery store, okay? Because you didn't know that you needed to bring your own bags. They do not, well, 90% of the stores that I went to in Turkey, grocery stores, clothing stores, you know, H&M, all that kind of stuff, you'll get a bag. But like grocery stores, it is B-Y-O-B. Bring your own bag, okay? Like, and places sell really nice. I actually... I, can, I ended up keeping my bags, um, my market bags, because they're really great for a variety of things. Um, but you will need to bring your own market bag and you will need to bag your own groceries. So, and people will start side-eyeing you if you're taking too long to get your stuff together, okay? So if you happen to forget your own market bags, most of the grocery stores are selling them and you'll need to buy one and they're cheap, but get it together. Like you need to know this because people will definitely be like, all right, <laughs> do not. And I may have said this earlier, but do not only go to Istanbul. Okay. If you have the time to explore other places in Turkey, you only really need like three days in Istanbul to, to do Istanbul. Right. Um, I mean, you don't get me wrong. You could it, you could spend a lifetime in Istanbul and probably never exhaust everything there is to do. So I'm not saying there's only three days worth of things to do, but you can hit the highlights and some hidden gems in three days and move on to another place. Um, and I don't know what type of travel you are, but I would just highly, there's so many, uh, Cara Denise, Bodrum, Fethiye, Antalya, Cappadocia, Eastern Turkey. There's so many other wonderful places to see in Turkey. And it's really cheap to fly around the country, okay? By comparison to United States and other countries. Like right now, I'm in Mexico, like I've been telling you throughout the video. For me to fly one way from Cancun to Puerto Vallarta was $250. Like I have a plane, I'm flying from Puerto Rico to Oaxaca in a couple weeks and it's $185. 
as opposed to when I was in Turkey, the average price I was paying for one-way tickets in Turkey was like 50 to $60. Now that could have changed, but it's, I mean, Turkey is a small country too, don't get me wrong, which is all the more reason why you should take advantage of being able to hit multiple places. You could literally like, you could literally experience it. If you only had seven days in Turkey, you could do quality trips to at least two places. So don't just go to Istanbul, even though Istanbul is wonderful. Stressful and chaotic, but it's wonderful. Um, And similarly, and this is my, oh no, I'm sorry. I have a couple more don'ts. <laughs> uh, I needed to scroll down some more, sorry. Um. I hope you guys don't mind me using my notes when I'm talking to you because this is just me naturally talking to you, but I don't want to leave anything out. All right. So the next one, don't be afraid to rent a car and drive. In my experience, particularly in Southern Turkey, I personally would not drive in Istanbul. I just, I would not do it. Um, but everywhere else outside of Istanbul, I really, really enjoy driving in Turkey. The infrastructure is great. The roads are great. Um, driving is great. The police don't stop you and try to extort you. <laughs> like, I, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful to drive through. Like, I love, I, I had a car there for maybe two, the last two months that I was there when I was in Southern Turkey. Um, and it just allowed me to get a lot of places that just on a whim it allowed me to be very spontaneous so if you're there on a long stay um it will just give you a lot of freedom because again like i'm saying turkey's not a huge country so you can be in a completely different region in like three to five hours depending on where you were where you are um so definitely rent a car and i also think that like uh the rule is like if you've been there under six months you can drive on your regular driver's license Psst. i had been there for nine months when i started driving and i didn't have to do any kind of different license but don't tell nobody um anyway but i'm not telling you to do anything illegal but just saying <laughs> okay what's next oh, oh don't get locked up okay and I'm not talking about locked up by the police, although don't get locked up by the police either. Um, don't get locked up in your bowels. And I talked about this earlier uh, when I was talking about do take supplements, but don't get locked up because as as I'm traveling and a lot of in a lot of cuisine in certain places like we're used to at least in the United States we are used to being served a meal that includes a vegetable, or at least I am. Like, you're gonna have steak and broccoli. You're gonna have chicken and asparagus. You're gonna have a, you know, a green salad, you know, kale. Like, all of these things are served in abundance in restaurants in the United States, even though a lot of people don't eat very healthy, but finding vegetables, I don't know why people don't eat vegetables in the States, because they're served everywhere. This is not common in most of the countries that I've traveled to outside of the United States. So it's very easy, especially if you're kind of on the go a lot and grabbing things. Like even if you're grabbing something relatively healthy, it's probably a lot of times it just doesn't involve any vegetables. And if you're eating a lot of dairy or cheese, meat, gluten, you might find yourself kind of locked up after a couple of days. So you need to eat your vegetables and make sure, you know, and your fruits and make sure you're pushing that stuff through. So just be mindful um, to eat your vegetables. Uh, and lastly, this is kind of a cute one, but don't trip over the street animals. Street animals are beloved in Turkey and they are everywhere. And don't be afraid of the dogs either. Like the dogs in Turkey, y'all, no lie. These are like the biggest dogs I've ever seen in my life. Like I've never seen dogs this big they are girthy i mean they are thick like these dogs are big um and also the street cats are the most well manicured looking street cats you have ever seen they're super cute i love animals i love cats um but yeah don't be alarmed by this and you will see them in restaurants especially if it's an outdoor space um if this is something that's like a deal breaker for you just know that again this is part of the culture 
They love the animals. They take care of them. You will find neighborhoods where there are little, literally people who have taken it upon themselves to feed the cats, feed the dogs. I have a friend who goes out early in the morning and in the evening after dinner to make sure that all the dogs and cats in her neighborhood, she walks maybe like a two mile radius and make sure that they're all fit. She does it every day. And when she's going to be away, she arranges with someone else to make sure that they do it. So just be prepared for this. You're going to see a lot of cats and dogs on the streets. Nine times out of 10, they're not going to bother you if you're not bothering them, but just be mindful. And they're super cute. So that is the end of my list. I know this was kind of a lengthy video, but I shared some things with you in the meantime. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are mindful of these things as you are traveling to Turkey, because one thing that is really important, and I realized this as I interact with more and more expats, immigrants, whatever you want to call them, or um, people who are nomadic and traveling around in different countries and even myself i have to check myself too right like i complain um i have a very love-hate relationship with mexico right like i you know but i have to re have to remind myself that like like Ela, you are in someone else's country you are in a different culture so embrace it be respectful be mindful be considerate because that's what makes you a good global citizen. So on that note, if you are here for this and other content, please do hit like and share this video, subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss a thing and have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have an awesome time on your trip to Turkey.